Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 18. Industrial melanism is an example of defensive adaptation of skin against ultraviolet radiations, drug resistance, darkening of skin due to smoke from industries, protective resemblance with the surroundings. So what do we mean by industrial melanism? So industrial melanism was the prevalence of dark colored varieties of animals in industrial areas. Now normally what happened in the industrial areas there was uh, you know the environment was mostly black in color because of the smoke emitted from the industries right. So the background was generally blackened. Now as a result of that it was observed that gradually the organisms in those areas they tend to have variations which made them darker in color which made increased amount of melanin pigment in them. Why? Because if the for example let's take the example of the peppered moth in UK. So before industrial revolution the color of the peppered moth was pale grey. Whereas after industrial revolution, it was found that the color of the moths were black. So why was that? So why was this change in color? Now what happened was when the moths were darker in color, they kind of camouflaged with the dark backgrounds. And as a result, they could protect themselves from their predators. So they could save themselves. So in a way, this darker color helped them to adapt with the surroundings better because their surroundings had too many industries. So therefore, therefore, there was too much of smoke and soot coming out of the industries. So the background was darker in color. So to protect themselves or for their better survival, for their better adaptation, it was found that these kind of variations which made the increased quantity of melanin which made the organisms darker in color was favored by nature right so we can say that industrial melanism is an example of defensive adaptation of skin against ultraviolet radiations no ultraviolet radiation has nothing to do with it drug resistance no darkening of skin due to smoke from industry so melanism is of course darkening of skin due to increased uh, pigment melanin but it had nothing to do due to okay indirectly it has to do something with the smoke from industries because when the smoke from industries was more that is why the background was darker in color and since the background was darker in color, so that is why these organisms or these variations were supported by nature. But directly there was no relation. The fourth option, protective resemblance with the surroundings. Yes, because it was protecting them. Why? Because their skin color was resembling with the surroundings. So they were able to survive better. So what was happening? The black colored moths were able to survive. Since they were surviving more, they were reproducing. So more black colored moths were producing. So that was the concept of industrial melanism. Question number 19. Two different species cannot live for long duration in the same niche or habitat. This law is Allen's law, Gauche's hypothesis, Dolo's rule or Wisman's theory. So we have learned, have, have we learned about all of these laws? So let us quickly look at them. Allen's law states that the ears, tails, etc. of animals living in extremely cold climates become progressively smaller. So in cold areas, animals tend to have smaller ears, smaller tails. So that's Allen's law. Gauss's law states that two species with same ecological needs cannot live in the same habitat indefinitely because, you know, both of them need the same resources to survive. So if both the species are living in the same habitat, so there would be too much of competition between them. So as a result, both of them would not be able to survive. So only one would win and the other one had to leave. So this is also known as the competitive exclusion principle because competition occurs between the two species and whoever wins would survive. The other one will have to move out or the other one gets excluded from that particular habitat. So that is why it is competitive exclusion principle. So obviously in this case it is going to be Gauss's hypothesis. Just for our information let's know what is Dolo's rule. It says that evolution is irreversible. So anything that happens in evolution cannot be kind of um, cannot happen the reverse way. Like if you look at human, revolu human evolution, so human beings today, the homo sapiens, they had uh, the apes as their ancestors. But now the reverse process is not possible because evolution is irreversible. Wisman theory stated the theory of continuity of germplasm, that is um, the characters influencing the germ cells are only inherited. Uh, acquired traits cannot be inherited. Question number 20. Which of the following is correct order of evolutionary history of man? 
Peking man, Homo sapiens, Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon. So let us look at the right sequence. And the right sequence is Peking man followed by Hiddelberg man, which in turn is followed by Neanderthal and finally followed by Cro-Magnon. So this is the correct order of evolutionary history. So if you look at the Peking man, so they were found in the caves near Peking. They were later named as Homo erectus. So where were they found? They were found in the caves of Peking. Later they were named as Homo erectus. Next is the Hedelberg man. So these, the fossil jaws of this man were found in the Hedelberg, which is in Germany. The brain capacity of Hedelberg man was around 1300 cc. Next was Neanderthal, which were first obtained in the Neander Valley, again in Germany. So the speciality of Neanderthal man was that they walked, they walked upright, they walked straight. They also had humped backs. Besides that, they were the first power of the first power of speech developed in them. So the Neanderthal man were the first men to develop the power of speech, like how we are able to talk today. So earlier it wasn't there. So the first power of speech developed in the Neanderthal man. And finally, the Cro-Magnon man. It is the most recent ancestor of today's man. So this is most recent ancestor of today's man. So they were well developed, their jaws do not project forward and the brain capacity of Cro-Magnon man was approximately 1650 cc. So these were like in order. So uh, Peking man was like long back, then Hiddelberg, then Neanderthal and then finally Cro-Magnon. Question number 21. Occurrence of endemic species in South America and Australia is due to these species have been extinct from other regions, continental separation. There is no terrestrial route to these places, retrogressive evolution. Now, first of all, what are endemic species? So endemic species are those species which are found only in certain restricted areas of the world. So you just found, find them in a particular area. So nowhere else. So what is the cause that we find these kind of species in South America and Australia? So one primary region is the continental separation. So if you look at the world map, so where is Australia? This is Australia. And where is South America? This is South America. So just observe their location. So if you look at their locations, you see Australia is like there is a geographical barrier between Australia and the other continents. It's like kind of separate. Similarly, South America is also kind of separately located. So since Australia and South America are geographically isolated from the other continents, therefore the species which live in these areas or these continents they do not live in other continents and that is why more endemic species are there in south america and australia so just to have a look at the other options what is retrogressive evolution so retrogressive evolution is that type of evolution where complex forms form of organisms develop from simple forms so simple forms to complex forms, that kind of evolution is called retrogressive evolution. So here there is no concept of retrogressive evolution. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.